cardboard. The traditional back of the wardrobe type plywood is always useful. So if you have any old wardrobes, don't take them to the skip. Beat the woodworms, cut out the, the uh, plywood at the back. Anyway, tools. You need one of these. A cutting board. Saves endless problems with the domestic authorities. You don't want to sort of carve into the uh, high quality veneer of your posh table. Uh, definitely need a tri square. That's a big one. I have a small one. Uh, if you're working in seven, eight scale, then the big one is essential, as I'll show you. The other thing is a device for cutting. Now be careful. You don't need me to tell you how dangerous these things are. You'll notice some of my skin on my fingers is missing. The good news is, if you are cutting a straight line, always use a straight edge. Never use a ruler. Well, you can if you want. Some people do. I've used an ordinary steel ruler, but it's, it's lost. Oh, here we are. It's ideal for measuring. Uh, try not to do too much cutting with it, because if it slips, obviously, there goes the end of your thumb. Health and safety. Right, anyway, we'll start with the material. Uh, cardboard. Uh, there we are. Um, chocolate, biscuits, um, stuff, shortbread, stuff like that. Save anything like that. It's always useful. Uh, that's some plain stuff. We can see it there. It's um, the thin material. I'm not too sure how thick that is. But uh, it's material that's been salvaged. That's a side that's been cut out from card. And now, I'll pass it around. It has been treated. You can use a material called shellac. Now, you all know what that is. In the dark days before plastic, people had to use cardboard and shellac was essential. Uh, you can still get it in the form of button polish, which needs to be thinned down a bit. Uh, other types of cardboard, uh, can you see that one? This stuff, it doesn't really show, is like a fibre board. You can get it from uh, artist supply shops. The traditional material from artist supply shops is this uh, quite thick material that they use when they're producing uh, pictures. They cut around it. It's called mountain board, I believe. And it's ideal, but too thick. And the stuff I also use, and it's not cardboard, is the 132nd plywood. Now that's available. It's coming difficult to get these days, but it's worthwhile getting hold of it. <coughs> now I'll move on to those in a minute. This coach here is genuinely made from cardboard, and it's about 30 odd years old now. It's built in 19. <laughs> And um, uh, it has stood the test of time. And I might pass that around. Just be aware that it may fall apart if it's dropped. <laughs> but um, as I say, apart from the balsa wood floor, it's mostly cardboard and the balsa wood roof. Right, so how to do it? You need a drawing. There used to be many drawings available in 16 mil today in the back issues. Whether they're still available, I don't know. Some of the draftsmen were a little suspect. Uh, somebody called John Wenlock, I, I don't know. Never liked his drawings. Anyway, si quite simply, we are making a box. And in this box, I have a box-shaped coach. Uh, essentially, two ends, two sides. We can pass that around later. Two ways of making the sides. 
First of all, you can uh, mark it out. That whether that shows up, I don't know. But uh, the idea is, when you mark one side out, you carry on with the lines using a, a decent pencil and your tri-square, and you mark out above as well. Any questions at this stage? Uh, obviously, a pair of dividers help when you're trying to get the spacings of the windows and the bits in between, which I call mullions, but uh, other people might call them something else. Uh, obviously, you need to get those the same, unless, of course, they're different. Um, here is a, unfortunately, this is plywood, but you can get the idea. I can pass that around. Now, I always make a lamination, three layers. Always make three layers or five layers, never two or four. Otherwise, it distorts, so I've been told. Uh, once you've marked out your sides, whether it's cardboard or plywood, using your cutting board, or not the table, and your good sharp knife with a new blade, you start slicing downwards, and across. I would use that. I would use the straight edge, carefully aligning. Now, some people I've seen even screw the thing down. But uh, if you're careful and it doesn't slip, fine and dandy. Now, uh, once you've marked out and you've cut, oh, by the way, the tri-square can be used for cutting vertically down. Again, watch the fingers. Once you've cut out your sides, and you're happy with the sides, and you've got a pair. Now, I've treated these with, um, this is not a pair, obviously. You treat them with uh, shellac or any sealant, and carefully sand, smooth, where you've been cutting. And then I like to just apply some paint, because Believe me, once you've got the glazing material in, it's difficult to paint those all-important edges. Now, this is the side that we've laminated earlier. Um, it contains uh, windows which, for some reason, don't want to slide up and down. This one will. No, I tell a lie, none of them want to move. How odd. But uh, the idea is that they can slide up and down if you remember to not put the glue in silly places. Right, so the way I, it's done, the way I do it, once I have cut out my side and I've made a um, second image, if you like, by placing cardboard underneath and using the first one as a template, I can cut through and uh, mark out and then cut out the windows. It's handy to just mark out where the windows actually are, by the way. I think you can see that. If you forget and you cut out the wrong piece, oh dear. Right, so I'll pass those around maybe and people can have a look. Once you cut out your sides, your inner and your outer, there's a middle layer. This can be uh, plywood, it can be thicker cardboard, like this stuff, or it could be um, balsa wood. Whatever you use, it, the idea is that it's more or less the same thickness as the glazing material. Now I use two thicknesses of glazing material, the thicker stuff for the actual windows, and the thinner stuff for the drop lights. More of the drop lights later. Unfortunately, um, stuff like uh, glass, if you can get it, is ideal, but it's very difficult these days to get the very thin glass. I have used glass in the past, uh, not on these models. These were plastic. Now, there is some inferior plastic around that goes yellow, but uh, the stuff I've used was uh, some kind of polycarbonate stuff from Squires, and it was excellent material. 
So, uh, to return to our little laminations, uh, some of these have got little vertical strips of wood just inside, just to reinforce. I should mention that going down. Otherwise, the stuff tends to pull out of shape. So, we apply glue, two sorts of glue. I wouldn't use that. I'd use the white glue. Now, that's uh, al alphalatic. It sounds like some disease resin. Uh, that's pretty good. I apply it with a brush. Uh, you can use PVA. It's cheaper and it's just as effective. But that dries more quickly. Uh, then we apply the middle layer. We apply some weights. Now, for that, I use um, any old chunk of metal, uh, domestic weights, an old-fashioned iron that your grandmother might have used to sort of iron the clothing, heating it up on the range. Anything like that of an antique quality is ideal. Anything flat and heavy, books even, will do the job. And we leave it for the glue to set. Uh, you may want to just put a piece of plastic cellophane or, or the plastic bag or something underneath. You need a flat surface. Obviously, you don't want to glue your lamination actually to the flat surface. Something like a piece of chipboard. Uh, maybe if you feel there's too much glue around, we can just uh, use a piece of plastic bag just to prevent anything adhering where it shouldn't. And we leave that to sort of settle, to stick. Now, in the meantime, this is the floor. Now, these go together. Yes, believe, believe, believe it or not, they do. That and that gives us our two sides. And then there's an end here somewhere. You'd be glad to know. Oh, yes, that's the end. Well, it might be from another model, but there we are. Uh, so we glue them together, making sure that we haven't got one like that and one like that, obviously. It can be glued, again, on a flat surface. Uh, the problem is, as I'm sure you'll realize now, that things can move and slip. So uh, just be very careful that everything's lined up. Now, there is a way of avoiding that kind of a problem. I'll mention that later. Uh, right, the floor. You can use the aforementioned plywood from the wardrobe, or you can use cardboard. This is a slightly thicker version. That's some cardboard of the uh, mountain board type, which is uh, ideal. I prefer cardboard for the floor now. I've tried plywood, I've tried hardboard, I've tried uh, the old uh, balsa wood. But I've gone to card, and I'll tell you why, it's much more stable. Now this is one of the reasons for using card. It's very stable. I've found that plywood, <coughs> even with the grain going that way, tends to sort of do that and do that when you don't necessarily want it to do that. It'll bow, it'll twist. And when you stick on the uh, sole bars, as we call them, I believe, um, if you're not very careful, things can go astray. I find plywood is a little bit dodgy like that, but cardboard, ideal. Now you might say, well, what happens if it rains? Well, obviously we're going to seal it, we're going to paint it, aren't we? So anyway, here's a cardboard floor to pass around. I hope I'm going to get these models back. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a second method of doing this. Uh, you just assemble the skin, the outside first. There's one here. You glue it on, edge to edge, like that. Particularly, say, if you wanted to put in spacers. If you're building, say, a coach of compartments, add strength, makes it much more rigid. Unfortunately, though, it makes the laminations more difficult. It, imagine, you, it, it's like building a ship in a bottle sometimes if you're sort of working inside there, fiddling about in there, you know, 
not much rudeness there. Can you, can you see that? Maybe not. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll look at that in a moment. A second floor here is going to be for a coach that's semi-open, a bit like the old Tunnelton Railway number 10. And uh, this is where the seats will go. So these blocks of wood massively reinforce everything, which makes it really strong, and also provides somewhere for the seats to actually anchor themselves on. There are other ways of making seats, but we'll um, talk about that later. So that's a, a um, pretty substantial piece of cardboard. And I'll pass that around. Unfortunately, I'm getting a bit tangled up here, but bear with me. So, material for things like sole bars. I use one of those uh, table saws and cut them out from any old scrap material. Uh, you can go to a DIY shop and purchase stuff like this, or at great expense. Uh, you can uh, maybe get it from a model, model maker supply shop or whatever. Unfortunately, um, I haven't got that kind of money. I just go and find an old piece of recycled uh, drawer frame or something, and I cut it up and use that piece of cedar. Now, that's nice stuff, cedar. Just be careful you don't have a knot in the middle of it because it will tend to sort of pull out of shape if you're not careful. Try and avoid anything that's knotty or got dodgy, wavy grain in because it will sort of waggle around for some unknown reason. I've got thinner material here, by the way, always useful. So moving on to my other little model here, another one I made earlier. This um, I started a few years ago. And uh, it got left at the back of the workshop or the back of the wardrobe or something. Anyway, it's um, a, dare I say, um, 45 mil vehicle. The idea is, if, if I take the door out, you can see how the doors are made. Uh, I'll just, well, I'll leave that one out. What I'll do is show you the door now. Uh, this is like a set of double doors. I've just glued strips of material that I've cut out using uh, originally my table saw and then cut it to size, glued it in position and reinforcing the cardboard door. And then we have the inner layer, goes the other way around, it goes like that and that makes the lamination, as you can see. Now, the reason why I've used uh, bits of plywood, bits of um, uh, softwood rather, rather than cardboard, is that uh, I wanted to keep it fairly rigid. Now, as for the windows themselves, you can see that it's, um, again, a lamination. Uh, I'll pass, believe me, I've got some stuff here. I'll pass them around. First of all, we cut out the uh, little bits and pieces that are going to make the two outer layers of the sandwich, if you like, the, the sliced bread. Now, this is 1 64th plywood. Um, it's getting increasingly hard to find these days, but it's worthwhile seeking it out. I used to make the self-same thing from cardboard, thin cardboard. But uh, this was voted superior in every way. So I'll pass that around. Uh, the middle layer is just built up from odd strips. So I'll pass that around as well. And then, obviously, we stick the three together. Using thin uh, polycarbonate glazing material, but not too thin. Um, I think it's about... Uh, uh, f possibly 164th, yeah, oh, it's slightly thicker than that, I think. It's round about uh, a 32nd, probably. It's a metric equivalent. Uh, once everything is glued together, again with the weight on, we just trim it to size 
using the trusty craft knife and uh, a tri-square <coughs> or a straight edge or whatever, again minding the fingers. So, we make the, the drop lights from a lamination idea and uh, they have been, these windows have been treated by the way with uh, shellac and uh, as you can see there's one here, they, these actually do slide so that's, that's good news, one, two, three, some of them don't. Right, I'll pass that around to this good gentleman there so that could be passed around. So, uh, we come to the roof. Any, any questions at this stage? No? Well, well you must be convinced. Yes, sir. When you're doing Frank. your sides, yeah. would you not get using two sheets of paper to make glass with the way it comes up to make sure it You could do that, yes, yes, if you've got some handy. Good idea. I'll go and order some. So, um, I've lost the thread. Oh yes, the roof. Now, this is a bit controversial. Some people like a roof that lifts off so they can arrange their little figures inside. Some people like a roof that's glued on permanently. Now, the reason for that is on a windy day it might blow off and somebody might step on it. So, it's your choice. I prefer to make my roofs so that they are glued on solid. Now, I haven't actually got any balsa wood. I use balsa wood for the roof. Uh, you can use plywood or you can even use cardboard. But it needs to be reinforced. Some people want to put lights in their little vehicles of various types. Um, this was probably for that one there. But the idea is I cut out a false ceiling, glue it in, glue it on, so it goes straight across. Having made a hole to insert suitable lighting arrangements, then I can run the wire along inside. I'll put it there. So if that was glued in, we have a hole there, the uh, lighting arrangement, the bulb or LED, whatever it is, is in the middle, and the wiring goes along. Uh, I haven't actually got one that's like that, apart from this one, which is virtually finished. So I will pass that around. Thank you, sir. And uh, as it's going around, you will notice that I've used six volt light bulbs of the uh, flashlight type, mainly because I like the <coughs> natural color, the natural glow that's produced, not the uh, sort of harsh light that an LED will produce, but more a sort of subdued, almost like a gas light. I think that looks a little bit more appropriate, but that's personal choice. I'll let you decide. Um, you may observe on that item that's passing around, you may observe that uh, the seating has been uh, made from uh, a material, cloth material, or an old shirt that's been cut up. Uh, the um, actual shape of the seat, flat piece of uh, cardboard or balsa wood or anything, and uh, where it's curved, again I use a kind of a thin piece of um, cardboard like the uh, material recovered from the um, uh, chocolate biscuit box or whatever. Um, no, no, I had another one. Oh, yes. Now, this one is quite an old version. I made many years ago. It's dated somewhere. Uh, I'll ask that to be pa passed around carefully. And you may notice, I think one of the doors is loose. Maybe not. I don't think I'll try it. But if you look carefully inside, you'll see the seating, how that's arranged. Again, it's, it has been made with a cardboard former. I've used some kind of um, shape. Now, if I remember, what I did, I had a, a flat piece of card or whatever. I glued a couple of strips along and then I glued a second thinner layer on top to give you that characteristic bowed shape that you get with certain seats. 
So it's all made from cardboard and uh, all glued together. And that's where I use the Evo stick. It's horrible stuff because it goes all stringy, as you know. But it's very good for certain jobs, as indeed for sticking the roof on. Now, if you're satisfied with your glazing, if you want to go in that way, you uh, then have to cut out little curved roof sticks. Now, that is one, and that's another one, that I've cut out actually using a craft knife and using the end as a former to sort of cut around. The, uh, the problem is, of course, if you're not careful, you end up cutting your um, nice curved shape. To make the actual curved shape, I should mention, what I do, I use an old pair of school compasses and a pencil to get that arc. Then I slice it out and sand it down to get the nice radius curve. Uh, Five minutes, okay. Now, the actual roof stick itself, two ways of doing that. You can either make it as a nice bowed shape, like that, or making it simpler, just one curved shape and one straight across shape, and then just glue them on. That's all there is to it. And then the roof is glued on. I use Evo stick because it's got this quality where it will go tacky, but you can still move the thing around. So carefully apply the glue, avoiding those horrible stringy bits, a bit like spider's webs that you get with it. And then you just stick the roof on, and you'll be standing there for about 10, 15, 20 minutes waiting for the glue to go off. But if you've been cunning, you'll have got a few pieces of strip wood, and you'll just put those down, and then put a few weights across the top just to hold everything together. Now you can use plywood for a roof, as I said, but it tends to be a bit more springy. If that happens, then people use rubber bands and things to hold it. You can, of course, nip into the kitchen when your good lady wife is not looking, put on the electric kettle, get your material, whatever it is, and pssst. Yes, darling, I'm making a cup of tea, pssst and steam it, and then you'll be holding it whilst it sort of cools off. But if you've been cunning, of course, you've made a sort of little frame with two strips of wood, say, across, and then you just stick it in and it holds its shape whilst it sort of cools down and dries off, and you've got a nice curved roof at the end of it. It's not essential to do that, but sometimes it helps because, believe me, it can spring back and move and everything. And then finally, you can apply white glue, PVA glue or whatever, and stick on old newspaper. Now, I knew I had some old newspaper there. And that gives you a nice textured surface. Now, I have found modern newspaper is rubbish compared to the old stuff. So unless you've got some newspapers dating back from the 1980s, what you'll have to do is uh, get some lining paper, which is almost as good. In fact, I think it is newsprint, actually. And then use that instead. But try the newspaper, because it's cheap. Only problem is, once it's wet, it expands. So you have to be very quick. You apply a little bit of water, stick it on, smooth it out with your fingers, leave it to dry, and it all goes nice and taut, without, hopefully, loads and loads of little bubbles. If it does well, start again, it's only newspaper. But as I say, try newsprint, it's probably, or try lining paper, it's probably better. Or even paper from uh, a pair of shoes that's come in a nice box, all wrapped up in like tissue type paper, ideal. And one other thing I wanted to show you, when you've cut something, nice straight edge, nice square, ideally cut with your circular saw, you want to sand them down. Rather than use abrasive paper like that, put it on a flat surface, do it like that. Works much easier. Right, well, uh, any questions? What are the roof sticks cut out of? Balsa wood, sir. It's balsa, that's yeah. very easy. You can use plywood, but I find it's a bit harder and you need to use something like one of those little uh, 
reciprocating saws. And the newspaper, you know, is that glued on? It's glued on with PVA. Okay. Yeah. Apply the PVA, thin it down a little bit, right. apply it with a big brush, and then moisten the paper, and then stick it on. If, it's, if the paper's moistened, it's going to expand. Uh, once it's sort of hardened off, trim it off to a nice close shape, and then apply some glue, and then you'll go along the edge just with your thumb and forefinger like that, just kneading it in. And then, of course, which I forgot to mention, I hope I've got enough time, uh, you may want to apply strips. Again, strips of cardboard cut out with your cutting board. You can apply those to make the actual beading. Now, I think the GVT coach there which was built using drawings from the Talithlin Association, and therefore it's to the Talithlin uh, profile. Uh, I think I used um, half round wood, half round balsa, which was, imagine that's a strip of balsa, right? Sanded like that to make it half round, and then sliced it off. Don't be upset if you mess a few, because you will. Treat them with wood hardener or with shellac. That's the other thing you can use. You can use this commercial stuff called wood hardener. It's used to make good things like holes in or dodgy pieces of domestic carpentry, whatever. Stuff that's been attacked with little, uh, with dry rot or something. Um, it's available at great cost, unfortunately. Uh, if you can get shellac, it's cheaper. Uh, it's the same idea, you just apply it, and uh, actually, the wood hardener, I must admit, does make the material a little bit more like plastic. It's some kind of resin, I believe, and of course it soaks in, and you've got a very waterproof material. Uh, painting, just apply the paint in a normal way, and the paint, of course, hopefully, will keep your cardboard uh, dry and it won't delaminate when it rains, but you never know. <laughs> anyway, any questions? Any other questions? Have we got all our bits back? What do you use to thin your shellac? You mentioned about thinning. Uh, you use methylated spirit. Right, just meths. Yeah. I've not got any left after drinking. Uh, obviously, you, you can drink it if all, if all else fails and you get depressed. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> believe me, uh, these days, I believe. Whiskey is cheaper than meth. <laughs> I'm basically lazy. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about using, say, a commercial card cutter, the sort of thing that people use for crafting? Uh, yes, but it doesn't work. Right. That's so easy to isn't it? Right, I'll pass that piece around because it is uh, a seven eighths. People can have a quick shifty at that. It is a seven eighths. Um, marked out piece of cardboard. In various magazines, you see people referring to a card called Strathmore. <coughs> Can you get it in this country? Uh, well, it's, it sounds familiar. I don't know what it is. Well, I don't do No. But I think, I, I think it's a particularly fine quality card. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. Yes, well. Part of it is a texture. Is it? On the, on the surface, yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I wouldn't know. It sounds incredibly technical and um, when you can get something like an old Quaker oat a box and look at that beautiful. other cereals are available <laughs> they are but I would recommend Quaker oats not because it's healthy or I'm being sponsored but because it's got that lovely wood color look at that it's once you apply a little bit of varnish or some shell up to that, you get this beautiful interior scumble effect. It's uh, underrated. So you could use that for the insides, as I think I did for one of these. Not sure which one. Anyway, uh, I believe I'm about finished now. John, good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.